sometimes friction is not able to prevent sliding. So let's imagine that we have a situation where there's a block that's sitting on a surface like this, and there's some tension that is applied to the block by a rope. Okay, so let's consider a few different cases. So if there's a really small tension, then we're going to have a gravitational force on the block by the Earth, a normal force on the block by the surface, a tension force on the block by the rope, and a friction force on the block by the surface. And the tension and friction will be equal and opposite, um, because if the tension's small, the friction will just cancel it out. Those two will oppose, and by Newton's second law, there will be no net force. Um, so just like the gravitational force and normal force will also cancel out. Um, if we increase the tension a little bit, then the two vertical forces are going to stay the same. So the gravitational force on the block by the Earth and the normal force on the block by the surface, those two are not going to change. But the tension is bigger, so tension on the block by the rope, and the friction force will also increase friction on the block by the surface. Okay, so, so far this looks very similar to what we did a moment ago. The friction will be whatever size is necessary in order to prevent slipping. But if we do even more tension, then something um, fundamentally different happens. Okay, so um, the weight will stay the same. So gravitational force on the block by the Earth. The normal force will also stay the same on the block by the surface. The tension will be bigger yet on the block by the rope. Um, but eventually the friction reaches its maximum amount. Okay, so the, if the friction can't get any bigger, then it's going to look like this, friction on the block by the surface. Okay, and so at this point, the tension overwhelms the friction and the block begins to slip. Okay, um, so if we plot it out, what this looks like when we actually do this experiment, we could take the friction force as a function of time, where we are gradually increasing the tension that we apply. And what we'll find is if we start out with no tension, then the friction is going to be zero. But as we gradually increase, the, the tension, the friction will increase as well. Okay, so this is looking like the first two diagrams that as we increase the friction, um, or as we increase the tension, the friction also increases to match. But eventually what happens is we max out the friction. So the friction can't get any higher, and what will happen then is it will decrease sharply um, and then um, be a constant but different value like this. Okay, so um, there are a couple of interesting points on this graph. Okay, so one is this maximum friction. Okay, so um, we call this the maximum static friction uh, because that's the, the friction um, where the object is not sliding. Okay, so this whole region from zero up until that maximum value, this is static friction. Okay, um, after that point, we get a different behavior for the friction. So um, the friction, once we have um, started to see some sliding, becomes what we call kinetic friction. And the kinetic friction appears to be constant. So the kinetic friction is not going to change depending on um, details of how exactly we're, we're pulling on the string or other sorts of things, which we'll talk about more in a moment, um, the kinetic friction is going to be basically constant. And so um, for this part of the motion, we have kinetic friction. Um, kinetic just meaning that the surfaces are sliding against each other. Okay, so what is the what are the key features of this graph then, um, you know, written out? So um, the static friction is whatever size necessary up to the maximum that prevents slipping. Okay, so the static friction is usually not going to be that maximum. It's usually going to be somewhere between zero and the maximum, just whatever it needs to be to keep things from slipping. But then the kinetic friction is just constant. Okay, so that's the much easier situation to deal with. We'll come up with a way to figure out what the kinetic friction is, and then that's just what the friction is. For static friction, we'll have to consider everything else going on in the problem in order to figure out how big it needs to be in order to prevent slipping.